This community, any community, can be an environmental justice site. Five minutes north of the town center of Miami, Oklahoma, there is a definitive calmness. Green fields stretch out across the horizon. It's hard to imagine that this peaceful scene could be part of one of the worst environmental disasters in the country. Several years ago, I thought, I'm not impacted. And when we were sending off a, a, a batch of hair samples back to Harvard, they wanted 50 samples. And we got down to 49, and I didn't have a 50th, so I put mine in as 49, knowing I didn't live here and knowing I wasn't impacted and getting the results back that I was. My name's Rebecca Jim, and I'm the executive director for LEAD Agency, and it's a nonprofit organization that we organized to deal with environmental issues in our area. Rebecca Jim is an environmental advocate in one of the nation's largest hazardous waste sites, Tar Creek. Years of lead and zinc mining left the area covered with large piles of waste material, or chat, and resting on top of hollowed out mines, which are beginning to cave in. Often, the mines will flood and acid water will leak out into the streams. Rebecca came to partner with us. Uh, this all started when Rebecca actually called me on the phone, I think it was either 1998 or 1999, looking for someone else. And uh, she asked me to help her find the results of some teeth that she had sent to another investigator here at Harvard School of Public Health for lead values and she was very persuasive and I ended up helping her and that sort of uh, blossomed into a partnership or a collaboration where she invited me to give talks in Tar Creek and I would come out. Uh, eventually I met other people in Tar Creek such as Mark Osborne and we started to partner and it uh, evolved into the MATCH study, the Metals Assessment Targeting Community Health Study, uh, which is still ongoing today. Uh, when they first opened this site there were volumes and volumes of information that uh, as citizens we would go to the library and we'd lay these volumes out and we'd try to figure out what they meant. There all these scientific terms and all these ways that you analyze stuff with methods and models and um, we didn't know what it meant. I was inspired by some high school students who were working with me in a service learning project that we called the Tar Creek Project and we were funded from the Cherokee Nation Learn and Serve. There were some issues that they couldn't do. So I thought, well, hmm, then, then we can do it as adults and we need to figure out a method of organizing. Before she founded LEAD Agency, Rebecca worked in the public school system. I was a high school counselor and a middle school counselor here for 25 years in this community. So. I got to see a whole generation of kids. This wasn't my first school district, and these children didn't act like children from other places. They could not attend, they couldn't um, pay attention long, they, they didn't learn easily. In 1996, a blood screening program showed that about 45% of children aged 1 to 5 living in the towns of Pitcher and Cardin had elevated levels of lead in their blood. Some families were impelled to move away. Others later accepted state and federal property buyouts, despite the financial losses they had to bear on top of the emotional difficulties of leaving their homes behind. In 2008, Pitcher Cardin Schools enrolled its final 51 students across grades 3 through 12 combined. The Harvard School of Public Health Superfund Research Program sponsored a science and art exhibit at LEAD Agency's 13th National Tar Creek Conference as a way to increase the opportunities available to students who have persevered through these difficult situations. Rebecca is a former uh, middle school uh, guidance counselor and one of the things that she's very interested in is sort of helping uh, children learn about science and get excited by science so that they can evoke change in their communities. So one of the things we were hoping to do was actually sponsor a science fair to sort of help her build that sort of enthusiasm and um, a sense of ownership of the science, uh, particularly the science around environmental health. 
The conference brings the Tar Creek community together with researchers and state agencies to discuss remediation, share insights, and pinpoint questions that still need to be answered. This collaboration has led to significant steps forward for Tar Creek. Oh, it's pretty amazing when you can lower lead levels in children. That's pretty amazing. And they were, they were so high here. Well, not so high to die from, but so high, so many. High enough that they were, their lives were changed forever. Levels of lead in children's blood have significantly decreased. The chat piles are a quarter of the size they once were and Tar Creek has gained a waterkeeper, Rebecca's partner, Earl Hatley. He was running the Oklahoma Toxics Campaign uh, out of Oklahoma City, which is three hours away, and I, I called him up and I would say, this is happening and this is happening, what do I do? And he was a great advisor. And so uh, EPA was, was having a public hearing, and so I called him up and I said, what do I do, what do I say? So he gave me a list of questions. Well, you might want to ask this or that. One time I was standing, I was giving Earl a tour, and we were standing over that bridge. And um, I said, um, you should just stay here. I'm good for you. So he did. <laughs> and then several years later, I was on that bridge. I was giving a tour, and uh, Bobby Kennedy Jr. came on the bridge. So I asked him, I told him that we were trying to apply to, to the Waterkeeper Alliance for a Riverkeeper. And after he saw the bridge, saw that water, he said, call my office. He used to have a Waterkeeper. So we became a member and Earl's the Waterkeeper. Rebecca, who is a member of the Cherokee Nation, focuses on living in balance with the land. I live in the country and I, I live on family land and I'm a farmer. We have one piece of property that has a, um, it's never been, it's a hundred acres, never been plowed, never been grazed officially, it still has a buffalo wallow in it. So it's old, old land. Mm -hmm. We have to finish this. And so that means following it, all of the stuff that comes down Tar Creek and where it goes next, and that's the river. Where it goes next is the lake, and the lake is where I drink. I drink that water. It's the water I get out of my tap.